most people would tell you that Wanda is a glass cannon, but I'm not most people. I suspected for a long time that Wanda is not only not a glass cannon, not only very much capable of taking a lot of hits, but that she's actually better at tanking than most characters. Her unique health mechanic is supposed to make it harder for her to restore health, but I found the opposite to be the case. Instead of health, she has age, which, let's be honest, it's, it's just reskinned health. When she takes damage, she gets older, and each year equals two and a half health. She can be between the ages of 20 and 80, at which point she dies, which gives her 150 health. She can only heal using Ageless Watches, one of which she spawns with. These restore 20 health and can be used every 2 minutes. So what exactly about this whole system makes healing so easy? There's nothing stopping you from making multiple, and after a not exactly cheap but also not expensive investment, you have all the healing you will ever need forever. Another feature that makes her good at tanking is her unique weapon, the Alarming Clock. This can deal such high DPS that it beats a Wolfgang using a handbat. High DPS is very valuable for tanking, since the faster you kill a boss, the fewer resources you need to spend on it. But Wanda can only achieve this aforementioned high DPS while old, which gives her 37 health to work with. Now, 37 health is lower than what we're used to, I don't disagree, but the game just has innately very powerful armors which are capable of entirely undermining this drawback. So, in this video, I will apply everything I just described and demonstrate that Wanda is actually very good at tanking. But first, I want to clear something up. The point of tanking is to increase the amount of damage you can deal by foregoing kiting. However, there are a handful of situations where that doesn't come to fruition. In those situations, I am allowed to kite. Tanking means that I use taking damage as a strategy to deal more damage, not that I will take every hit possible. When I spawned, I immediately saw beefalo and a touchstone. I also quickly noticed that this is a twiggy tree world. Personally, I really don't like twiggy trees and usually immediately reset upon seeing them, but because of the immediate lucky finds, I'll give this world a shot. Soon I found the mosaic, where I did some mining and then got to digging graves, and then found a second herd of beefalo. This herd only had two beefalo though, so I needed to go back to the first one. I had a beefalo saddled, but before continuing exploration I made a piggyback. I found that the only real downside of tanking as Wanda is that the watches take up a lot of inventory slots, which I hope to remedy with this. An extremely important resource in this run is marble. I'll need it both for a couple of Wanda's crafts, as well as for armor, so I'll gather all that I can. During exploration, I also gathered a lot of nightmare fuel, since I'll need a lot of it later down the line and in the near future. This base location really caught my eye, being in the Dragonfly Desert and having a good wormhole, so I dumped some stuff down here and continued exploring. Something I'm particularly eager to find is a totally normal tree, since with a shadow manipulator I can make the alarming clock. Soon I found one and returned to base to do some crafting. By this time I'd usually be done with exploring, but I was facing exceptionally poor luck with finding the shadow pieces. What I did find was this set piece, featuring a fire staff surrounded by red hounds. I killed the hounds because they can drop red gems, but did not touch the staff. It'll be helpful later. Shadow pieces, however, continue to be elusive, and I did not find the set piece until day 12. I mean, just look at how much of the map I had to explore. If this were any other run, this type of terrible luck would absolutely warrant for me to restart. But thing is, this run is doomed to be slower from the start. This is obviously because I'll be tanking bosses. While tanking does reduce the duration of a boss fight, it takes up much more time in terms of preparation. Back at base, I crafted all but 13 marble into marble beans, and then went to look for the ruins. But before that, I went to the Nightmare Wear Pig, because you can harvest 9 marble from his pillars, which I am counting on. When I found the monkeys, I stopped there a bit to gather some Thulosite fragments. The fragments in particular will be needed to craft some of her items, 
In this case, the Aegis watches are what I need. I only gathered 7, which isn't much, but I'm hoping on gathering more elsewhere. I found the Labyrinth very quickly, but I wasn't ready to fight the Guardian yet. First I need a construction amulet and more Thulcite fragments. Fortunately, I got a couple red gems from digging more graves, so that's no longer a concern. Soon I had what I wanted, but before actually killing the Guardian, I used him to harvest the few walls present in his arena, and then backed out to do some crafting. I crafted four more Aegis watches and marble suits using the construction amulet, then went to kill the boss. So, turns out that weak little Guardian here actually packs a huge punch if you tank him. So much so that the amount of Aegis watches I have aren't nearly enough, but there is a solution. The Guardian doesn't respawn or regenerate, so I simply leave for a while and wait for the watches to be ready. Having to constantly leave makes this quite tedious, and the occasional insanity doesn't help. I do make him ram into pillars in order to buy time to kill nightmares, but I don't attack him in this time. I do, however, allow myself to kite his shadow tentacles, because they attack frequently, they interrupt the attack animation so there's no point in tanking them. Who would have guessed that tanking one of the easiest bosses would be so frustrating? The chest had good loot, and I got to crafting. I walked away with two Starcaller staffs, a deconstruction staff, a mag, a pig slash axe, and two construction amulets. I'll be using the construction amulets mostly to make marble suits. Each one represents the value of 15 marble, which seems like decent value to me. I also have some more Thulosite fragments and a sixth Ageless Watch. I had also located the atrium where I dropped the ancient key. Right after the ruins, I went to fight the Nightmare Werepig. Tanking Guardian was frustrating, but he was an exception in that regard. The other bosses, including this one, require much less effort. In this fight, the Marble Suit not only provides 95% damage reduction, but also prevents him from knocking you down, which is extremely convenient. Usually I get some sanity food for this fight, but Wanda actually kills Nightmare so quickly that this is unnecessary. I got him to smash the pillars, since I am planning on using Dreadstone this time around. Despite the fight being very easy, it's actually cutting it close with 6 watches, so I was close to death when the boss fell, but that's by design. I used the construction amulet to make 2 helmets. Why 2 helmets? It has to do with how armor durability works. If you're wearing a helmet and a suit, then the durability loss will be evenly distributed between the two pieces. This essentially doubles the durability of marble suits. The Dreadstone Helmet is the perfect candidate to absorb this durability loss, since it's very durable and slowly fixes itself while worn. It is also particularly good for Wanda, since it usually drains sanity while repairing, but old Wanda is immune to that. So now that I'm back on the surface, I want to kill Dragonfly. Dragonfly is in general a very easy boss to tank, so much so that it's unnecessary to use marble suits. The 90% damage reduction dreadstone helmets suffice. That being said, their durability falls a little short, so I brought some body armor to carry some of the load. There is the threat of overheating and catching on fire in this fight, which can be deadly, but let's be honest, how often does that happen? The fight got a little bit exciting because a hound wave showed up, but that's nothing a pan flute can't solve. Now it's winter, and that means something very important for Wanda. Tusks. I went over to the walruses and got one on the first try. Using it, I made a backtrack watch. This allows you to teleport to a marked point as long as you're carrying it. This marked point will be my base. I then set out to move marble pieces. I had already missed my first opportunity to fight them, but they don't take high priority, so it's not an issue. Along the way, I also worked on pearl quests and found Chester who I've previously missed. By the time I had moved them, a lot of my marble trees had grown so I harvested them. I killed McTusk again, but got nothing. I began looking for claws at the deciduous near my base, but found nothing. By nightfall I was at base, 
and I was ready to fight another boss, the twins. I specifically started with Spasmatism, because it is the more threatening one and I want to get it out of the way. First phase goes about how you'd expect, no shenanigans. Phase 2, however, just cannot feasibly be tanked. The twins' second phase has immense firepower. In order to tank it, I need more Aegis watches and much more armor. Because of that, I'm resorting to a slightly cheesy method. The twins have a bit of a weird mechanic where they take a while to wake up. This allows me to damage them and put them to sleep before they ever get a chance to attack. So only 5 uses of the pan flute later, the first twin is defeated and I begin working on the second one. I spent the whole day mining marble trees and then finish the fight at night. Claus is my next target, so I continue looking for his sack and found it in the mosaic. I could not find his deer though, I recall seeing them during autumn near Picking. Although I had already searched there, I looked again and found them. Claus is one of those bosses I would normally never tank, but can be easily pulled off. The only hitch is that the fire and ice attacks pierce armor, so I have no choice but to kite it. Despite my lack of movement speed making it worse, it's still a laughable amount of damage. Outside of that it's smooth sailing, Krampus can be brushed off, and even Claus's big chomp attack doesn't hurt much. The loot gave me a bee queen crown, which I'll be putting to good use. For instance, I can use it while fighting the scrappy werepig. Despite the fact that every boss consisted of boring tanking, I still found each one to have some sort of gimmick. This one... not so much. So I'll just, uh... By now it's really time to get to ocean exploring, but it's almost a full moon so I don't have much time. I just explored some nearby waters, hoping to find a bottle and salt, but found neither. When it was time for the moonstone event, I made a very typical setup and started the event. I realized Wanda can really quickly mow down the were pig and hounds, so I did that to help myself to some meat. On the way back I killed McTusk again and got a second tusk. I'm planning on making another backtrack watch, but I need more Thulosite for that, so I'll go to the archives to get the astral detector and the Thulosite. Things were going fine until I accidentally hit my beefalo. My heart sank since I thought this would be enough for it to get untamed, but nothing actually came of it. I got back to base for Klops to immediately signal her arrival, and yeah, I just killed her. I didn't have much time to find Pearl before winter ends, but I tried. I did find a bottle, but it was already too late for me to complete the vest task. My plan was to give her the vest and set my second backtrack watch to teleport to her island, allowing me to immediately return during spring when ready. But now that plan's failed, so I turned the backtrack watch into a walking cane instead. The fact that I didn't give her the vest isn't too bad, just means I have to complete a slightly harder quest. But now that Pearl isn't an immediate priority, I will fight Bee Queen. Bee Queen is one of the few bosses in the game where tanking is a viable option, so I'm just using an old method that works for every character. There is no point in tanking Grumblebees, since they can easily stunlock the player, so I'll be kiting them. In phase 1, I kill all but one Grumblebee, since if they're all dead, Bee Queen spawns more. And then I just dump damage on the boss. In phase 2, she spawns a whole lot of bees, or I use the Panfoot to give myself time to attack Bee Queen. I always find this phase to be the most frustrating, but it's a walk in the park with Wanda's very high DPS. In phase 3, she sends her bees out at high speeds to attack you. This can be used to your advantage, to take them far away and win time to attack Bee Queen. Phase 4 also plays out the exact same. 
Bee Queen is a boss I usually don't like fighting, but Wanda makes it very easy. Now that I could make bundling wraps, I tried to get a potato from the junkyard, but no luck. Next, I went to the Lunar Island, where I got absolutely nothing done because I didn't have a pickaxe, and then continued exploring for salt. The most likely place to find salt is near the shore. This method in the past has served me very well. This time, not quite so much. I had to explore over halfway around the island before I found it. Oh well. I have to fight shadow pieces pretty soon, and filled the time with mining marble trees, starting a farm and preparing for the fuel weaver fight. Shadow pieces is one of the most illogical bosses to try to tank. They're definitely among the easier bosses in the game, and that's because kiting them is very easy with enough speed boost. But since there will be no kiting being done, I'll have to absorb all their damage, and they do a lot of damage. I'm going in the orthodox order of knight, bishop, and rook. By the end, I'm nearly dead. But again, that's by design. Now it's time for Fuel Weaver. All I was missing at this point is fossils, which are easy to get with how quickly Wanda can kill spiders. At the pseudoscience station, I turned my walking cane into a lazy explorer and made two construction amulets using the green gems from Dragonfly and the twins, then headed over to the atrium. Fuel Weaver is the only boss beside Bee Queen where I think tanking is a good idea, so this will be a pretty typical fight. In phase 1, I just stand in the corner while attacking him. In phase 2, I lead him around the arena, destroying unseen hands and avoiding woven shadows. Although, I'm definitely not proud of this fight in particular. I was really off my cage dodging game, and Fuel Weaver healed a lot because I messed up. Demonstrated that even when he heals a lot, Wanda has the DPS to shut him down. Seriously though, despite my very imperfect performance, this still turned out to be a quick and easy fight. It's really about time I get to Pearl Quests. I organize what I'll need and gather the few remaining resources before going to her island. I fixed her house, planted berry bushes, planted flowers, killed the lure plant, dried kelp, collected trash from the water, and built the upgraded chair. It wasn't raining, so I couldn't give her an umbrella, which is the final quest. But remember this ice staff? Picking it up triggers rain, so I did that and gave her the umbrella. And she didn't give me the pearl? I definitely completed 10 quests, so in my confusion I turned to Dr. Speedrun himself, who told me to hammer and rebuild the chair. But I couldn't make a hammer, so I gathered rocks from sea stacks of all places. This means I had to wait another day to complete the quest. Everything in this run is just taking longer than it has to. So, come day, I hammered the chair only for Pearl to give me the pearl before I could even place it again. I guess she just really hated the chair. Next, I used the astral detector to find the two pieces of the second lunar altar and move them to a boat. Now I just need to defeat Crab King to trigger the moonstorms. So, Crab King got reworked. The new boss has gotten a lot of criticism for being mispotential. I don't disagree, but honestly I'm just relieved that the boss is no longer the nightmare it used to be. But how well can it be tanked? Well, he doesn't actually do very much to damage the player. So much so that I only brought 3 Ageless Watches and just used Dreadstone Armor. The claws can be killed very quickly with the Alarming Clock, and the crabs can just be put to sleep. So, not much of a fight. I activated the Moonstorm, but I wasn't ready to go there quite yet. Before that, I went into the caves to gather some green caps, and also went to the Lunar Grotto because I forgot to gather Moonglass while I was on Lunar Island. Back at base, my potato still hasn't grown, so I spent some time making a watering can for cooling off, and cooked some food which I will definitely end up using. The potato took longer to grow than I was expecting, but we got there eventually. I went over to the Moonstorm, where I gathered all the required Moongleams and infused Moonshards before helping Wagstaff. 
Recently, it was made so that you only need to complete the event once, so I got this out of the way first. They also switched around the names of two tools for some reason. Anyway, I now had everything to spawn Celestial Champion, including the Celestial Orb. I spawned the boss and backed up to organize my inventory. Celestial Champion is the only boss beside the Twins where tanking is unfeasible, particularly because of its phase 2 spin attack, which deals an absurd amount of damage when tanked, so I'm resorting to partially cheesing the fight. Phase 1 goes how you'd expect. The alarming clock outranges one of its attacks, and I'm dodging the gestalts. This attack doesn't actually deal damage, but puts you to sleep so there's no reason to tank it. Then comes phase 2 where the cheese starts. Standing on the edge makes the Celestial Champion push itself into the water. This allows you to outrange the spin attack while using the alarming clock. I still tank the other attacks though. I'm aware it seems ridiculous to say Wanda can tank bosses and then proceeding to cheese, but it's just that the Twins and Celestial Champion really, really, really do not want to be tanked. It's not a question of the character. Those two bosses just require way more armor and healing than what I'm willing to get. Anyway, Phase 3 goes about the same as Phase 2. I just backed up a couple times to cool off, grab some armor, and give my watches some time. The fight ended hauntingly close, which I genuinely didn't expect based on every test I did. Nonetheless, it was over. Now it's just Toadstool left, whom I had already found and am prepared for. This fight is similar to Crab King in the sense that he doesn't do an awful lot to hurt the player. The bone armor completely shuts down the explosive mushroom attack, and the spore bombs are handled the same way you normally would, since they're an attack that's pointless to tank. I'm using the strategy of burning trees and getting Toadstool stuck behind ponds. It didn't take long until Totsil began doing his ground slam attack, which he does in the final third of his health. Thing is, this attack is very easy to accidentally dodge while baiting the boss and lighting trees on fire, but I still took a couple to the face. So, like much of the bosses who came before him, Totsil couldn't withstand for long against the sheer power of Wanda, and as such, the run was finished. So, this is my worst boss rush as far as time is concerned. Usually, time is a pretty good indication of how strong a character is, but this time around there are a lot of other factors. As I already mentioned, this run was doomed from the start to be a much slower time than one that could otherwise get, because tanking is inefficient and makes things more time consuming overall. Outside of that, I also let a bunch of bad luck slide that I'd normally reset on further increasing the time of the run. My main motivation behind this video was to demonstrate that Wanda is not a glass cannon. Despite the fair amount of bad luck, this run still finished in the first year, which I believe stands as incontrovertible proof. She is a tank, the complete opposite of the high-risk character she was supposed to be. And playing her as such isn't just theoretically possible, but entirely realistic, even in a strict time budget. I do want to go deeper into the explanation behind what makes this so easy, and outside of that, I still have a lot to say about the character. In fact, I have too much to say.